<laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Let's give the Lord a hand praise in this place. Let's magnify him. Hallelujah. Anybody came to worship? Tell them thank you. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. In spite of what I'm going through, I still got to praise. In spite of my ups and my downs, I still got to praise. In spite of my back being up against the wall, I still got to praise. It don't matter what I'm going through right now. Now I still gotta pray. So just magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come to lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Great is thy faithfulness towards us. We praise you, Lord, for just being God all by yourself. Bless you, Lord. There's nobody like you in all the land. We lift you up in this place today. For you are great and you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I came to praise him. Well, I came to lift him up. If I got to praise him all by myself. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. For the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And if my, hallelujah, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and heal their land anybody got something they want God to heal for them anybody got something they want God to do for them hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah <laughs> glory be to God thank you Jesus Lord, we lift you up today. We lift you up because you alone are worthy. Yes, Lord. We pray, God, that you continue to stretch out in this place today. We pray for a move, a mighty move. We pray that, God, that you would just do a new thing. Somebody say a new thing. Hallelujah. We asking for a new thing today. Just pour in this place. We asking for a mighty move in this place today. That whatever you do today, God, we thank you anyhow. So, Father, we lift up those that are sick and set in on this morning. We lift up Pastor Charles. That God, that you will continue to regulate everything that's going on in him right now. That God, that you will restore a speedy recovery. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That God, that you will touch those that are traveling on today. We ask God that you will grant traveling mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, Lord, we ask that, God, that you would look over the bereaved family throughout all the land. I ask that you look over Denise and Deborah. We continue to lift them up today, God. They're in the house. Yes, Lord, Hallelujah. They could be mourning somewhere, having a pity party, but they chose to come worship you, oh, Lord. We thank you today, God. Hallelujah. 
that no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. In every tongue that rise against us in judgment, God, you said you will condemn. I thank you, God, because you saw fit to wake us up this morning. It wasn't the alarm cock clock because I can't give it credit. Hallelujah. I can't give my wife credit for waking me up. But I give you all the credit, God. Because if it wasn't for your exhale, I couldn't be breathing today. So I thank you in advance for what you've done, for what you're doing. For great is thy faithfulness towards us, O Lord. We bless you in advance. For your word said we should not worry about what tomorrow's going to bring. I thank you for right now, a right now move. I thank you for moving in this place. I thank you for stretching out in this place. I thank you, Lord, for putting a new song in my spirit. For you alone are worthy. I bless you for just being the rock. The rock of my salvation. I bless you for just being the star. That bright and morning star. I bless you for just being the light of Judah. We give you praise today, God. For you are the one. Somebody say, you are the one. Who spoke into existence. And it was. And it was. You are the one that said, let us make man in our image you are the one you are the one Lord the only one that is able to do a seedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think so God I pray I pray right now for my mother. I ask God that you will cover her mind. Right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking God that hallelujah that you will cover her right now God. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet God. Oh God touch her mind. Touch her mind God. I'm not claiming anything, but I believe God's report. Because God, I know you're able. I know you're able to do it seemingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. So that if I ask for it, it shall be given. If I can think about it, he who hears in secret will reward me openly. So I thank you, God, that even with my mouth closed, you're able to hear my thoughts afar off. You're able to answer my prayers. You're able to move on my behalf. You are my rock, my sword, and my shield, my buckler, my strong power, and you will I trust today. And we bless you. And we bless you. And we bless you, God. And we bless you, God. And we bless you. Hallelujah. Mm. God, we pray for this community. That God, that you would touch those that are in this community 
I pray that God that you will go and that you will put your arms around that woman in that man that's lost right now that's confused right now let your power fall when we call on that name of Jesus God I'm asking that you will answer their prayers even when it seems like hallelujah prayer is not working in their favor God I know that you could move hallelujah I pray that God that you will move the stronghold of the drug addictions alcoholism hallelujah thank you Jesus I pray that God that you will just move right now God somebody's trying to overcome a stronghold and I'm asking that God that you will move on their behalf I'm asking God that you will answer their prayers because I know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that they can ask or even think so God I'm asking that you would do it for them somebody say do it for me Lord and Lord we will bless you today we will glorify you God bless right now God Pastor Terry and Jess Gilbert God as they celebrate their family reunion on this weekend God we lift them up and their families hallelujah bless their cookouts in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus And God, we stand in the gap against the plots and the plans of the enemy that he has placed over your people. We ask God that you will set up blockades that the enemy won't have no victory over our sons, over our daughters, over our families. Right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the legacy of my grandmother. We lift her up today, God. We lift her up, God. Strengthen her right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, touch her now, God. I lift up my Aunt Mamie. God, I lift her up to you, God. That you would touch her body. That you would regulate her blood that you will put a pause on that cancer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop it in this place, Lord. Stop it in this place, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And God, we will give you praise. Jesus come on people come on come on come on saints thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we tell you thank you thank you Lord that's trying to get the lock off the gun that the gun will break right now in the name of Jesus I'm praying that every plan has been counseled in the name of Jesus I pray that God hallelujah I speak peace peace Lord peace Lord somebody say peace Lord in the mighty name of Jesus that God that you will cover right now. Hallelujah. I pray that God that these young men and young women that are driving 
in residential areas twice and triple the speed limit that God that you will stop them and their track right now in the name of Jesus that you will save their lives and save that lives of those that may be injured in any accident right now God Lord I pray for the families that lost loved ones on these streets these past weeks and even on the highways God I pray that God that you would touch them right now God those families those families those families of violence I thank you God I thank you that you're covering right now God Satan you release your hold I pray for that young girl that that young boy that's lost being abused I'm asking that God that you will cover them and that God that you will make a way for them God give them a way of escape somebody say break free and we thank you in advance God for what you're about to do hallelujah somebody give the Lord a praise in this place out of town a couple of them had to leave on a family emergency and we lift them up today hallelujah we lift the Rogers families up in the name of Jesus their God that you will cover right now hallelujah again somebody say stop the violence I realize that the only way you can stop the violence if, is that you got to stop the violence within yourself. Because once we stop it within ourselves, then nothing the enemy can try to do can cause us to do what we don't really want to do. Amen. I was I was given the privilege to do the home going of a young man and God gave me a word that moment when I got there and when I begin to speak I begin to think about David about how David, how David didn't mind running towards the battle. I began to think about how David wasn't afraid of trouble. You know, we sing, we sing the old songs that trouble in my way. I had to cry sometime. Hallelujah. But I hear David saying, trouble in my way, I got to run right to it. Hallelujah. So, I began to think about David a little bit more I think I finished preaching the sermon I preached on David uh, uh, and when I began to talk about David the Lord said I am the one and he said, if you tell my people, he said, you picked the right one today. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when I begin to think about David and how David went up to fight Goliath. And when he knew he had the opportunity to fight a giant, 
See, some, some of us, we're not looking for trouble. But I found out something that David don't mind finding trouble. Hallelujah. That when he noticed trouble, he finds it and he go ahead and put himself right in the midst of all of that. So, I'm going to share this with you. The Bible says the battle is not yours, it belongs to the Lord. But here's the thing right here. When God calls you to do something great, he will position you to be the one. The one in that battle. You'll be the one standing up and being the one keeping the family strong when the family should be broken. You'll be the one, hallelujah, when everybody's calling your name and, and it seems like you just want to get a break. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody say, you got the right one today. So when David walked up and he went to give his brothers some, something to eat, he noticed his brothers running back when God Goliath ran towards them to challenge them. Nobody wanted to challenge Goliath because of how he looked. And, 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 and it's the thing right here. I believe in my spirit that Goliath was a big intimidator. When you looked at his armor, it intimidated you. You already just said you was already defeated. When you looked at when you looked at his sword, hallelujah, you were already intimidated because of how big and vicious it looked. When you looked at the man carrying his shield, you he was already intimidated because now he got on so much armor that he had to have a second person carrying his shield. But that didn't matter to David. That didn't matter to David because David, when David realized that, that Goliath was challenging, he said, give me somebody that would fight against me and if he wins, if he beats me, y'all win and we would turn ourselves over to you. But if we win, hallelujah, then y'all would turn yourselves over to us. David said, who is this uncircumcised? Philistine who defiles the army of the living God. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody need to stand up and, and say something. Hallelujah. Because you've been put in a position where it's time for you to speak up and speak out so here's the thing so when David began to speak that his brothers his, I got that one right here. his brothers just say that one for me his brothers begin to get on him chastise him saying that you just join out but what they don't understand that David was training for this day David was training for this day. It's just like a lot of us right now, we're in our word and we feel that we have a word to spread to other people, but we're not willing to let this word out. It's just in our bellies. But after a while, something on the inside of you will give birth, hallelujah, to that anointing in you. And then you'll start speaking and then you'll start talking and then you'll be... Because it starts in your belly. Hallelujah. I didn't come to church, hallelujah, just to hold my pregnancy in. I came to give birth to something, a high anointing. I came to give birth to something. I came to push out my praise in spite of what I'm going through. So all of that being said, David, David was so bold. I, I love it. David was so bold that, look, so bold that look when King Saul put David on his armor David said nope I have been proven this if I wear this I know I'm going to lose faith is the something of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen listen I haven't used this kind of armor before when I went up to the battlefield I went without a physical armor.
but spiritually I was covered by the blood so David takes off the armor of King Saul and he goes down to the brook and pick out five smooth stones the number five means grace and listen when David picks out five smooth stones we often wonder why did he get five when he only needed one <laughs> we gotta understand that Goliath has some brothers hallelujah you mess with one you mess with all of us because if he realized that if he get Goliath down Goliath brothers might just try to run up but here's the thing right here when you deal with your enemy when you deal with the situation everybody that's in line to try to come and attack you will see how you dealt with that situation and they ain't gonna want none of that they ain't gonna want none of that they ain't gonna want they're, they're just like you know what we'll just pick them up and take them from here amen hallelujah so david he deals with the situation he picks up five smooth stones and some of us the main reason why we haven't went as far as we've been trying to go is because we haven't put grace on it we haven't put grace on it grace number five is the number of grace my thing is i want to put five on five because i want to put grace on grace because when you need god to do something great in your life you need god to move in a mighty way i need his grace and what bags up grace mercy Woo. so david he takes it he takes the five smooth stones and he runs up he goes and he faces goliath goliath comes to the battlefield with the one that carries his shield so it was two people and I, I thought about this right here that when you're holding a shield Minister Harris when you're holding a shield oftentimes you're not always you're not keeping it down here unless you're sword fighting but you're going to keep it so you can block what's up here because if, if, if anything can get to here it can brutally damage you so we can take this thing right here that David was up against Goliath I wondered I said Lord how did David get the rock to penetrate the shield in the helmet You got to understand that in order for the rock to get to the lion, it had to come through all of his armor. It had to come through all of his armor. So therefore, I don't care how bad your enemy is. I don't care how bad your situation is. God said, I'll get you through whatever it takes to get you to that promise. So David, David takes his sling and put a rock in it. One rock, one stone smooth enough. When I think of a smooth stone, I, I think of these rocks. I got up here, these stones right here, that I can skim it across the water. And I was telling the saint, I was telling the people at the at the funeral, I said, David, when the Bible says when Goliath came out, David made haste. That means David ran. And, 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 and here's the thing right here. David ran with a twist in his arm. With a twist in his arm. And and and, and, and when you think about it. When some people get into a fight, they can run to you with a fist. They call it that Superman punch. Hallelujah. So therefore, when David was winding that thing up, it wasn't 
David's strength that did all of that. It wasn't his strength. Not by power, not by might, but by my what? My spirit, said the Lord. So therefore, David takes that and he releases it. What he releases is grace and mercy. What's pushing you to get you to your final destination is grace and mercy. What's keeping you from releasing what's on the inside of you is your self-conviction. David took everything off himself and put everything on God. On God, I'm about to take this giant down. On God, I'm about to deal with this uncircumcised giant. On God, I'm about to change my status. On God, everything in my life is about to be different. On God, I'm going to be healed. On God, I'm going to rise above this. On God, I got the victory. On God, I put this on God, hallelujah, we're going to walk in victory. On God, we're going to rise above this and that. On God, I am the one. If you mess with me, you're going to realize you mess with the one. Hallelujah. If you're going to bring it, you better bring it, baby, because I, I am the one. Hallelujah. You've been bullying my brother and them, uh, but I'm the one to try to bully today because I'm the one that ain't gonna back down for a fight. I'll stand. Because you gotta understand one thing. I'm the one because one of the things you gotta understand here is that my weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to pull it down of strongholds and I you got a Goliath in your life and God said it's time to pull it down so therefore the lion and the bear didn't have a shield the lion and the bear didn't have a helmet but Goliath had a helmet and he had a shield And I hear the Lord saying that I'm going to put some fire behind your voice. I'm going to put some more power on the inside of you. I'm going to elevate your anointing to another level. I'm going to cause you to be spent. When you speak, you're going to be heard. Hallelujah. I'm going to cause it. So when the spirit of depression come up, God said, I'm going to move it. I'm going to deal with it myself. Hallelujah. When your anxiety begin to rise, God said, I'm going to deal with your anxiety. I'm going I'm to deal with everything about you, your mental balance. I'm going to make sure I balance this thing so that you can get the victory. So that you can go back and tell everybody that thought bad about you that my God has won again. Hallelujah. We can start saying that. He's one again. Somebody say he won again. He won again. God said it is in you to tell all your friends. God said, but don't forget about when you tell your friends. They say, hallelujah, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. I'm going to tell my enemies. I'm going to tell everybody that said I've never mounted nothing that God has
so many testimonies and stories in the old time, in the old days of how people became Fortune 500 business owners. Hallelujah. They'll say we came into this country with nothing but just the clothes on our back. But we built this out of nothing. And now here we're standing. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you this to tell you today right now is that the main reason why your dream has not manifested is because you're sitting on that thing and started getting birth to that thing. It's time to give birth to that thing. your dream just to be dreaming about something God said I ain't give you a vision just to have a vision about something God said I gave you a plan and it wasn't just any kind of old name plan it was the master's plan it was the master's plan God good that's sermon number one <laughs> Woo! I got a God who got a master's plan I serve a God who's capable of doing a seed in me and abundant of all I can ask to think yes he can do it yes he will work it out yes he will figure out Jesus. Hallelujah. I dare a few of y'all step to your feet and just give God an ignorant praise. Just praise God like you're silly right now. Hallelujah. Don't care about who's looking at you. Just make some noise. Just lift your hands and, and just magnify the Lord. wrong day so I'm the one that day you picked the wrong day so I'm the one that day you picked the wrong day so I'm the one that day you picked the wrong day so I'm the one that day Give God praise. <laughs> Listen, like these young folks all the day, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. It's time to keep it real with God today. It's time to lift that name up. Hallelujah. It's time to give him 110 percent today. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Wave that hand in victory. Wave that hand in victory. Wave that hand in victory. Listen. Listen, I, I want to say this, and I'm going to get the praise to see if y'all want to sing a single song. Hope. Hallelujah. God just showed me something. He just showed me something. L listen. What's on your hand? You got five on each, five fingers on each hand. Hallelujah. But you get the real smart people say, no, you got four fingers and two thumbs. Hallelujah. You got four toes and one big, two big ones. Hallelujah. But here's what I want to tell you today right now is that, listen, God said, I've given you four times the grace, four times the grace that you need from both of your feet to both of your hands I quadrupled your anointing 
Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Bless his name. Bless his name.
Haleluya Haleluya Hallelujah, just give God praise. Praise the Lord. For in three days, y'all, he rose again. His name is. Jesus, oh Jesus, he healed the sick, y'all, and he raised the dead. His name is Jesus, oh Jesus. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. shall bow every tongue confess his name is Jesus oh Jesus for in three days y'all he rose again his name is Jesus oh Jesus Amen. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Oh, what's his name? Jesus. Say Jesus. Every tongue confess his name is Jesus. Whoa, Jesus. For in three days, y'all, he rose again. His name is Jesus. Whoa, Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus.
Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. 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 The more I call him, the better I feel. The more I call him, the better I feel. What's his name? Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Listen, listen, real softy musicians. That's the name that you can call on and start a terrorist service right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because there's power in that name. When you call on that name, his power's going to show up. Hallelujah, his power's going to show out. What's his name? Hallelujah. I really feel, I really feel God. Woo. Anybody need God to show out for them? Woo. Anybody need a supernatural miracle today? Hallelujah. Well, then you have to know you serve a supernatural God who can do all things. Not some things, but he can do all things. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, uh, it's time to raise the offering. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm asking for the ushers to bring... I want to thank God for my little sister and my brother-in-law being in the house on today. Hallelujah. Somebody say, ain't God good? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was talking, I was talking to my grandson uh, yesterday. He said he wanted a blue soda. So I gave him a dollar, he got a Pepsi. So <laughs> I was like, do your mama let you drink sodas? He said, yeah. So therefore he when he was drinking the soda, we was riding down the expressway and it started raining. And I told him, I said, you did that, Jeffrey. I said, you got to stop drinking the soda. Because every time he sipped on it, the rain came down harder. <laughs> and he kept saying, no, Papa, that's impossible, Papa. I'm not doing that. He said, it's, it's not the soda. And I said, I tell you, it's the soda. <laughs> and I was joking with him. And I didn't know he was gonna do it. Before you knew it, you can't, you can't, you can't tell a baby to do something, and they ain't gonna do it. I made a mistake, and I tested him. I let down the window, and I said, "You gotta get rid of the soda." <laughs> and before you knew it. I, I said, man, what, you, what a soda? He said, Papa, you said get rid of it. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. And I said, oh, my God. I said, oh, my God. So now you got it all on the ground. Now it's going to rain hard. He said, no, Papa, that's your fault. <laughs> so uh, it started raining real hard. Now, I was, we was driving my wife's car, and I forgot what a 
wiper blades work? How do you turn them on? We don't drive it that much. So I'm driving 440 in a rainstorm, trying to figure it out, swerving, trying to, it just rained real hard. And finally figured it out and got it together, amen. But to God be the glory. Amen. But I, I, I dare not to try him again like that. Amen. Jesus. <laughs> they ready to keep on starting something right there. Y'all about to set them, uh, those, those, that organ and those keyboards on fire right there. What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You know, in the Bible, they, they will say, they will say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. But one thing we don't got to add, son of David, we just call that name Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to follow the direction of our ushers. Amen. church and let's go home get right church get right church get right church and let's go train might be too late. The train might be too late. He
turn number eight up. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody is standing as we pray over the offering. Also, I want to thank those that are watching via Facebook Live for using Giveify and a church cash app. However you give, we thank you for it. Amen. Father, I want you to point your hand to this basket. I'm asking for God to release some things. Anybody got something they need from God that they've been waiting on? Hallelujah. You've probably been asking God for a house for a long time. And God said, I'm going to give it to you. But you got to stand still long enough for me to get it to you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those who gave and those who didn't have to give. I'm asking God that you would give back to them, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Your word says in the book of Malachi, prove me now that I wouldn't open up the windows of heaven to give, pour you out a blessing that you will have room enough to receive. Lord, you said windows. You're simply saying, try me with your tithes and your offerings. So today, God, we give cheerfully, not grudgingly. We give with expectations. God, I'm asking that you would meet every need. Physically, mentally, spiritually, and even financially today. I thank you, God, for the overflow that's coming to your people. I thank you for the increase in their business, business opportunity. I thank you for growth like never before. Thank you for the change. I thank you for everything becoming new. Somebody say new, 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 new. In your son Jesus' name, now bless this offering and purpose in which it's going to be used. So let the church say amen. amen. Somebody say it's time to get radical. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I know something is happening because I'm not just, I know something is happening because I know that God is opening up doors like never before. He's expanding my territory. He's expanding yours. Some of us may not can't see it like we want to see it. But if you look hard enough that when he expands you, he expands your health, Amen. your finances. Yes. He blesses your children. Yes. He restores everything that's broken. He repairs it. I want you to repeat that to me. Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my, territory. my territory. Somebody say, Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my, territory. my territory. Listen, Jabez, the Lord said, what is it that I have to do for you? Jabez said, Lord, that thou will enlarge. He had the opportunity to ask God for anything. But he said, Lord, said with me, Lord, enlarge my territory. I need you to get a little bass in it. Put a, just dig deep down in your belly because you're about to give birth to expansion. Somebody say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Now I got one more question to ask all of the believers. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Yes, he will. Won't God do it? Yes, he will. Now give God a praise. God said I'm going to do it because... 
because you trust me. You trusted me. Hallelujah. When you could have just threw in the towel, you trusted me. Listen. Listen. Is there anything too hard for God? Amen. Hello, everybody. It's afternoon now. Well, good good afternoon, everybody. That's why I didn't say good morning so much earlier. But hey, man, God is good. And he's good all the time. And I definitely appreciate him for all that he's done for me. Hey, Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Ministers, deacon, and deaconess class every first Sunday at 10 a.m., from the pastor. The block party is August 5th, y'all. It's around the corner. If you don't have flyers, I have some. Deaconess Davis is passing some out. Um, pass them out to people. When we out shopping and stuff like that, we give them out to, to the people because that's what it's for. It's for the people. Um, it's going to be here August 5th from 11 to 4. Those of you who are volunteering, between 8.30 and 9.30, we need you guys to be here because we have to do setup, right? And we need all hands on deck, um, not just for the setup, but for the cleanup as well. So we're going to have free book backpacks and school supplies, first come, first serve. So um, um, we're going to have bounce houses, one for the little ones, one for the big ones. We're going to have horse, horse um Junior's Horses and Vicky's Ponies. Uh, the ponies is for the toddlers. Um, Redeem Faith Fellowship Praise Team and the Atmosphere Shakers will be there. Free raffles for adults and children. Um, Faith A Collection Wig and Set of Bundles for the high schoolers, so we'll be giving those away. Um, these are raffles, though. Free phone and tablet booth. We got free haircuts. Um, by Astra, free braids for girls, ages four to sixteen. When we do the hair, we we do want the kids to come prepared to get their hair done. So make sure the hair is clean. Don't come taking down no hair. Talk about you want your hair braided. You know, maybe do a ponytail or something. But let make sure the hair is clean. They're going to do the two or either three braids for the girls and the haircuts for the boys. Amen. Um, we're going to have mental health counselor, Pastor Barry. We're going to have face painter and much more. So the food pantry will be open that day. So either ask for Deaconess Vivian Davis or myself, Sandra Cannon. Um, we're going to have Pop Smoke Pit. So they're um, donating um, real tips. So we also going to have food, hot dog, burgers, and brats, and corn on the cob, and all that good stuff, all kind of drinks. And we want to thank everybody for donating, those of you who donated. If you still want to donate, there's still time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, so that's for the block party. Also, coming up, we have the church anniversary, Redeem Faith Fellowship 10th Year Church Anniversary. Amen. So this is the ninth year um, black, black, back to school block party, but it's the 10th year anniversary. The anniversary is September 3rd, um, that Sunday, but it will, because of um, the holiday, we'll be celebrating it on the 10th um, of September. And then after the service on Sunday morning, pastor and first lady is inviting everybody to church to their house. Amen. So everybody is invited, and we will give more information as the time get closer. Also, Sunday, October, I mean, Sunday, September 24th, we have member appreciation coming up. 
continue to give to the project um, via uh, um, Giveify, via Cash App, or you can give stars on Facebook. Continue to patronize the um, vending machine downstairs. Um, all that is going towards the project. So whatever you do, remember, we are in the process of expanding. Amen? Amen. Um, any other announcements? And I also want to have, add um, the twins, um, Pastor Denise and, and Minister Den um, Deborah. I know I'll probably mix it up, right? So I, I got it right? Yes. Okay. So um, I know that you guys lost your father and been praying for you guys. And anything y'all need us to do, just let us know. Amen. Um, are there any other announcements? Any guests? Any guests? Please stand. Amen. We want to thank y'all for coming. We um, hope that you enjoy service. Feel free to praise God in any way you see fit. Amen. And, and please come back. Amen. So these are your announcements. Amen. So these are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. And let's give the Lord a hand praise. Y'all can do better than yet. Y'all giving God a hand praise. Y'all ain't giving me no hand. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Oh, give God a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mighty God. Hallelujah. How many of you know we serve a mighty God? Hallelujah. I was everything that God put on my heart today that I didn't execute right away. I realized that Every song that was sang from the praise team to even a song that was sang by Mr. Rogers was placed on my heart. So I really feel that God is in this place about to do a what? New thing. Somebody say, do a new thing. It don't always look new until somebody else tell you, man, you don't look like what you've been through. <laughs> Hallelujah. You start, they, start, they start giving you giving you something that you're not even familiar, you're not even ready for. Amen. And that's when you start looking at yourself and say, wow. A change did come upon me. 
Listen, I, uh, I just feel in my heart that compelled that, and God cannot put it on my heart and be wrong, that I was thinking about my little niece over there, Tamaja, and God placed it on my heart even, uh, I think last week, I think you came last week, and you came this week, but I know last week you were, y'all was up here, y'all was singing, but I hear the Lord saying, there's a song in you, and he wants you to sing that song. So if somebody would help her with her children while she come up and take this floor and give us a song, and then, you know, you got the praise team that's here to bag you up. But the, mess, the, the, best, the best bagger up is nothing but God. Somebody say, poor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When God begins to do something new in your life, he changes the birthing process. Hallelujah. And things start changing. She has some beautiful kids. She has some very beautiful kids. Amen. And hallelujah. And then after she has sang, amen. Next week, next week, after she has sang, next week, it was our fifth Sunday next week, right? I'm going to put y'all on competition list. Whoever invites the most people next Sunday will receive a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Friends and family day, whoever invite, come on now. Somebody say, I need that blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, at this time, I want y'all to stand to your feet and receive her as... She began to sing the song. Let God use you. It's in you. This is a new season. Come on. Let's give God praise. How many of y'all know that God is good? In the midst of the storm, when stuff just going crazy, God is still good. He remains the same. His love never changes. So, he's been so good. God is. He is good. God is. You are out He's been so 
for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When friends turn their backs on me, God's been good. Yeah. Hey, when I felt all alone, God's still been good. Yeah. Even though I'm dealing with a mess with my kids, God's been good. Yeah. My praise is still my weapon. My praise is my way out. God's been good. God's been good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I didn't deserve it, but you still love me. You've been good when I wasn't worthy. God, you've been good. God, you've been good. God, you've been good. You've been good all by yourself. God, you've been good. Let the church say yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Oh, hallelujah. You've been good. Anybody can stand to their feet and say it to themselves that God, you've been good. You've been good, Lord. I need a few people to say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yes, Lord. Let me hear you say yes, Lord. Let me hear you say yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Listen, as we're standing to our feet, anybody still got expectation in their spirit today? Hallelujah. In spite of everything that I've been through, I still got expectations. I'm going to be going to the book of St. John, the 11th chapter. God is about to call some things out today. Woo. Hallelujah. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you 
for what you have done thus far. I give you praise, I give you glory for truly your spirit is in this place. I thank you Lord because this is your hour as always. You worthy lips of clay give me what to say. I am but just your vessel made in your likeness and in your image. And right now, Lord, I yield to your will and your purpose over my life that you may feed your people a word today. Feed your people new life today. Give them hope in their hopeless situation. I thank you in advance that after every word has been said today that all things are going to become new in our homes in our life in our mind we thank you in Jesus name amen amen it's Hallelujah. My wife, she's still in training back there, so she ain't, she, I, probably, I ain't get a chance to show her how to put that up there. Maybe I did. You can take that more control, hit number one. That's right, go, go ahead first, lady. <laughs> Hallelujah. My daughter Khadija, she plays an interest and want to be involved in that part of the ministry, the media part of that ministry. Yep, that first one, that one. Yep. Get a little bit closer. You right on you right above it. Go a little bit over that way a little bit more. You hit number one, the one, the top one. Hey bad. That's okay. She seemed to have a difficulty happening. Amen. Let's give God praise anyway. She Get it. She's gonna keep trying. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh St. John's the 11th chapter. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. So now you just have to stroll with me up and down. Amen. She got it. She had to put a little reach in it. Amen. Trying to be all cute with it. <laughs> I just joking with you. She fine as all wine. Amen. Oh, that song they sing, finer than Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I ain't going to hell from listening to that song. Hallelujah. <laughs> I listen to that. Amen. Put a smile on my wife, Faith. Yeah, amen. Just because I'm a pastor don't mean that I, I need to walk around and just be holding it there now all the time. Hey. See, you in, see, see you in the grocery store. Ah, bah, 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 bah. I don't need. Amen. Y'all may take your seat. Hallelujah. Y'all y'all, are probably stay away from me. We're going to start verse 1. St. John chapter 11, verse 1. What do you say? Oh, you got it? Okay. I, I don't know. Charlene be trying to trick me. She be like, like right, you distracted me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again. If I knew a person like that every time I saw them, they go into that, I'd be like, look, there he is. <laughs> I'm serious. Amen. But, but amen. I mean, I know some of us are praises who I am. I mean, I, I, I praise God in spite of everywhere I go. But I got to have a sense of humor. I got to be able to put a smile on your face. I got to see how you're doing first. If, if, if while I'm talking to you and you say, hey, Pastor, would you pray for me? 
And sometime I'll be like, right now? And they'll be like, yeah. And then we go pray right now. You know, someone will be like, no, just pray for me on your time. You know, and I'll do it that way. Amen. But if I see they need a right now prayer, I say, let's pray right now, brother. Amen. And then you have people stopping around you. And then when you get finished praying, they be like, amen. I didn't did that before. Hallelujah. But here we find in St. John, not first or second John, St. John, the fourth gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. Amen. Verse 1 I'm going to skim through it because there's a lot to read until I can get to my point. Amen. A lot of y'all know the story, but I can tell the story also if you're a visionary. Amen. They say, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou loveth is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abided two more, two days still in the same place where he was. Anybody will be like, wait a minute. I just told you that my brother was sick and you just gone continue to sit there but we got to understand here that he stayed there two more days but before he said he's before the bible said that he stayed there two more days he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god now if if he would get there right then and there will god get the glory It wouldn't be like the glory that they expected. Because this right here, something supernatural had to happen if in order for something spiritual to take place. Hallelujah. We got to understand that Jesus just didn't sit there like he didn't know the person and didn't care about the person. But it was to give God all the glory because there was supposed to be certain people in place that didn't believe. It wasn't for just anybody. It was just for those people that didn't believe. But Mary and Martha, they knew who to send for. Some of y'all may say, call the pastor. I may be down in Tennessee in a truck stop sitting there trying to go to sleep. And you were like, pastor, we need you. Be like, oh, my God. I'm just like Jesus. It's going to take me two days to get there. So I'm believing in God that by the time I get there, he's going to hold out. He, she's going to hold on. Everything's going to be all right. If you believe that God can work through me like that, believe me, I, I am on the way. Hallelujah. Just as soon as I get rid of this load on back of my trailer. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and it has been that way with me uh, uh, several times. My wife had went into hospital, and me and her both have deep understanding that the laws, the laws for truck drivers are different from laws of people who's driving a regular car. So therefore, I couldn't just, if my wife was sick, and if my job couldn't get a rental car, tell me I couldn't go home. And all my job could do is apologize to me. But we've been together so long, or we was together so long before uh, those, those things that happened in her life that she knew that I was on, what, the way. 
I don't care if people say, where your husband at? He's on the way. Hallelujah. Because God knows my heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And let me go down to verse 11. It says, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, our father, our friend lies, were sleeping. But I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Disciples, he just confused the whole, all 12 of them brothers. He just confused all of them. And then said the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he should do well. <laughs> So, like I said earlier, you know, my alarm clock didn't wake me up but God. Hallelujah. My wife didn't wake me up but God. So the disciples, so what Jesus was saying right here, and his disciples heard it, went all the way over their heads. Amen? And say, how be it Jesus spake of the deaf, spoke of his deaf. But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep so it went over their heads then said Jesus unto them plenty Lazarus is dead and here's this would probably baffle me this would probably baffle a lot of us if we were standing right there with the disciples when Jesus said that he said and I am what glad <laughs> for your sake that I was not there to the intent ye may believe nevertheless let us go unto him so when you hear that word from Jesus and it comes out unexpectedly but intentionally I am glad now Jesus you had me up until this point I don't understand what you mean I'm glad so the same thing is like if it was a, a, a death in the family and I say I am glad everybody in the house would look at me like you can get out <laughs> I'll gladly open the door for you to get out the house <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> thank you Jesus and it says, then said Thomas, which is called Denimus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with thee. <laughs> so he's, it's, 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 it's so, 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 so in their minds, they're thinking about something else. But when Jesus talked, Jesus is talking but it's going over their heads. So now if you would come and say, if I heard one of my friends, we it's like three or four of us, and we like one of us saying, talking about death and dying, and one of us say, let us go so we may die with you. I'd be like, you can go. i tell you what. I don't feel this is my time right now, Thomas. You ain't speaking for all 11 of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're speaking for yourself, but it went over his head. So Thomas speaks. I, I, when I read these, it, it kind of makes me smile, and, you know, and I think about it. Then when Jesus came and found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about four, 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to com comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. I said, I ain't going. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Listen. And he says, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt 
faithful acts of God, God will give it to thee. So what's that saying right there? That Martha knew that Jesus had the power to do something supernatural. Up until this point, she never witnessed Jesus raise anybody from the dead. She didn't see any of that, but she believed in her heart that if he would ask God, God would give him whatever he asks. Hallelujah. So she knew that there was something different about Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, thou brother shall rise again. Now here's Martha saying unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. In her mind, she want him to rise right now. I know he's going to rise in the last days, but, but I need last days to be right now. But it almost seemed like she contradicted herself when she said that part right there, because right then and there, she said, before she said that, in verse 22, she said, that if whatsoever thou would ask God, God would give thee. And so now she's saying something about the last day. Now Jesus said in verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am. Look at this. She said the resurrection at the last day. In the resurrection at the last day. He said, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection resurrection at the last day Jesus said I am the resurrection in the life he that believeth in me though he was dead shall he live mm. yet should he live so here's the thing right here he's speaking that word and, in, and encouraging her encouraging them Letting them know that, look, even though that's who I am, if he believe in me, if you believe in me, you shall live. Even though you're dead, yet you should live. And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. And he said, believe it thou this with a question mark. Leave them with a question. Believe it thou this. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world, which, which shall come into the world. Let me read that again for you, for you believers. She said, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, the master is come, and call it for thee. Did Jesus call for her? Did I read that? Did I read anywhere in there that he told Martha to go get Mary? Any of y'all see that in there? You see that, honey? First lady, you see that in there? I don't see that. I don't see that. So she goes and tells, she said, secretly, saying, that master has come, and he called for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out followed her saying she is she goeth unto the grave to weep they had people back in old days that would come in the house with you and just weep with you cry with you mourn with you the wailing women amen then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. 
When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come see. Jesus was in a mortal body. So to, for us to be the kind of people that we are, we are compassionate people and we feel sympathy. And the Bible says, and Jesus wept. Jesus saw everybody else weeping and with compassion, he wept. So they seized Jesus weeping and said, then said the Jews, behold, he loved him. Look at this. They <laughs> then said the Jews, behold, he loved him. Loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that which, that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in the spirit. You ever had anybody just tugging at you? Just testing your patience, just getting on your nerves. Hallelujah. You hear him in the background just talking about you like, look, I guess, I guess everybody talked about how great he was and how he had it going on, but I guess he ain't got it going on good enough to help this situation out. Hallelujah. And, and, and so it's just that, that, that you have those people that know how you get down and they want to try you and cause, and, and, and cause conflict in your life. But the Bible says in Jesus groaning in the spirit like man. They're, they're testing my pace and they just don't know that I am the son of the living God. They just don't know that the moment I heard that Lazarus was sick, I could have spoke a word and Lazarus would have never died. But because I know that this was for God's glory, I had to let my father work his business out. I had to let God handle things himself until I arrived at the place. I couldn't just do what I really wanted to do because if I would have let flesh get in the way, I would have ran to my friends situation. If I would have rose him up, if I would have rebuked death and sickness, I would have shown my power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But because, hallelujah, my father didn't want me to, 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 to interfere with his, what his hand was doing. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We always want God to do something. And when we know that we can do it, we always put our hand in it. And we start messing up in the process. When you should have made Jiffy mix cornbread, you turn around and make Iffy mix cornbread. Because you didn't pay attention to So, I recognize that Jesus understood obedience unto his father. Because he knew that this is for God's glory. This is not for my glory. Even Martha and Mary knew that Jesus had the power to call on Lazarus right where he was. And Lazarus would have got out the bed and went out basketball or something and done something supernatural oh my god so groaning in the spirit hallelujah I know it was probably just irking and just, just tearing inside his spirit because some of us when we get ready to do something when we know we can do something we get so angry Anxious. We get so anxious because we want to show that we're able to do it. We'll let you do it your way. Hallelujah. But then all of a sudden, we you gotta move. When I got to thinking about that right there, I was thinking about the five heartbeats when they when the guy said, Oh, and we gotta play. 
that when they was up there singing, he was just hitting some off the wall note. They just got impatient. That one of the young men just got it in his mind and said, you know what? I'm going to creep on over here and push them on off the, the organ and took over and, and played this song right. So every once in a while, you got to do that. You got to show your boldness. Hallelujah. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Listen. Now, verse 37. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Now listen. How long Lazarus was dead now? Four days. Jesus tell them, he said, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha and the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, but, he said, Lord, by this time, he stinks. Think it. For he had been dead four days. Lord, if you open that thing up right now, we're about to catch it. And we don't want nothing coming up out of there. Four days, eating already exploded. Rigor mortis is now becoming hemorrhous. <laughs> Hallelujah. All that gas get caught up in your body, then all of a sudden you just be released. Now, when we think about it, we look at it, and we think about it, and we, we say, ain't no way. I don't know what a dead body smells like, but I know what something dead smells like. And I done seen all kinds of dead carcasses on the road. And if you're in a traffic jam, every once in a while, in that traffic jam, you can look over to your left or right and you can see a dead carcass because you'll start smelling something. And then you start spraying down your truck or your car. Verse 40 says, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe that thou shouldst see, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place. Jesus had to say all of this just to get them to move a stone. Hmm? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou heard me, has, hear, has heard me. And in verse 42 says, and I know that thou heard me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Listen. And when he has thus spoken, he cried, he cried with a low voice. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Is that what it said? He cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Here's the thing we got to understand here. One of the things we got to understand here, 
is dead. He really didn't have to cry with a loud voice because he already had it going on with a low voice. Because just like he said while he was praying, it's because of these people which are around me. I want to make a scene so that they can understand. Because you got to understand one thing, before they get, he gets to this point, he calls on, on Lazarus. He begins to say things to the disciples. And the disciples, the disciples are, it's going over their heads. Martha is going over her head. So now, now Jesus is, the Bible says he's crying, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus come forth. Now listen, we often wonder why is it that Jesus cried out with a loud voice? We wonder why is Jesus dealing with this situation different from every other situation? But in spite of all of that, we have to believe that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I need at least two or three people to give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now we got to understand that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Lazarus Lazarus was where the father was. I believe he was glorifying God while his name was getting ready to be called. He had to call him through death doors. Reach Abraham bosom. Hallelujah. Just to call one person. Now everybody Listen, listen, everybody, now each one of your kids know their name. I can, I can see your kids in, I can see your kids out, way out somewhere, and I can get to call in their name, and they may not recognize my voice. But the Bible says, my sheep know it my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. L listen. Every parent has a different tone to their children's name. So if dad will call his son in a crowd of people, the son will recognize that voice. It may be 20 Cornells in that crowd, but because I recognize my dad's voice, I know I can follow that voice. I know that's my father. Hallelujah. Same thing if I call my daughter Tori's name and she's in a crowd of people. It can be all kinds of Tories out there. But because Tori recognized my voice, Tori would drop everything she's doing and come and see what daddy is calling her about. Because she don't want daddy to have to come down and come get her. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But there's something about that when Jesus called Lazarus' name, we don't see back in old days, it was common. The name Lazarus was common. We got to understand the name Lazarus was common back in old days. And it could have been more than just, it could have been more than just a few Lazarus in that graveyard, in that cave. Every name has a di different frequency. Everybody that's in this room has a different, different personality. So if I'm, I, and we, we got twins in the house right now, amen. If you, don't, if you don't look at them and know the difference between them more than enough, you'll get them mixed up all the time. But because now I know Denise and Deborah, amen, and I got to know them over time, hallelujah. I say, which one is Denise? Which one is Deborah? Hallelujah. <laughs> I used to do that, amen, because they didn't want to be calling, you know, her by the wrong name. Amen. But Jesus get there. 
And I recognize that there's some things in your life today that's dead that God is saying to you today that it's time for you to speak those things that are not as though they were because those things have been dead in your life too long if you want it back you gotta speak that thing out of that grave site you gotta call it out so Jesus walks he, 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 gets, he gets to the place where Elijah lays and after crying and weeping The stone has been moved. The Bible ain't talking about anybody's complaining about what stinks or not. Because they brought that point up. If you move that stone, it's going to be terrible out here. But just the rolling away of the stone is symbolic to what was going to happen to him just in a little while. Hallelujah. But it wasn't going to be nobody calling Jesus' name. It was going to be Jesus getting up with his own power. But Jesus speaks and calls Lazarus by name. And I can say this to all of y'all right now today. That if you believe it or not, that even in your brokenness, just like the songwriter says, he knows my name. I can say that to myself today because he knows my name because when I was broken, guess what? He called my name. When I was lost, guess what? He called my name. When I was running from my calling, he called my name. He called my name in the mock and the merry. He called my name when my back was against the wall. He he called my name when I was dead in sin, seeking to rise no more. He called my name. Therefore, I can say he knows my name. He knows who I am better than I know who I am myself. Hallelujah. Because while I'm praying for him, the Bible says he's already provided and made a way for me. That while I was praying, he was already putting together some things. He knows my name. Hallelujah. He knows my name. Enough to call my name out of a dead situation. I need at least two or three people to stand up and say, He knows my name. He saw my pain. Hallelujah, when I couldn't see it myself and he called me by name, when I was about to commit suicide, he called my name. He called me from a bad place to a better place. The Bible says he spoke with a loud voice. He made sure it went through hell and it went right over into Abraham's bosom. Hallelujah. Broke through the veil and it hit Lazarus right where it needed to hit Lazarus at. And the Bible says that and Lazarus came out. Nobody went in to get him. Nobody went in to get him. Hallelujah. You got to understand God is going to make sure ain't nobody going to help you out when he call your name. Because when he get ready to call you to greatness, you got to get up by your own strength. The Bible says, and he that was dead came forth, bound the hand and foot. With grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them. Loose him. And let him go. Nobody. What did he say? I'm going to go back again. It says. I'm going to read this again. And he that was dead came forth. Now. At the end of it, he said unto them, loose him and let him go. Understand this, that 
He that was dead came forth. I don't think some of y'all caught this. I need y'all to catch this right here. He didn't send nobody, none of them, to go in and get him out. The Bible says he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, tied down, even his faith. Now how, now here's the thing right here. Again, I'm going repeat to this, repeat this verse again. My sheep knoweth my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Bound hand and foot. Lazarus come forth. Now there had to be, now if I'm bound hand and foot, that means that in back in the old days when they wrap you, they wrap you up so tight that you can't bend your knees. There had to been supernatural power operating on the inside of that grave, that cave that he was. God said, I, when I call your name, death got to let you go. When I call your name, hallelujah, poverty got to let you go. When I call your name, hallelujah, everything that has been taken from you got to be given back to you. God said, when I call your name, huh? it ain't going to be the people coming in helping you get up. Huh? Oh my God, hallelujah. It's going to be my name. My voice. When Jesus spoke to Lazarus, when he spoke to Lazarus, I can almost imagine that Lazarus laying there rose as if something supernatural lifted him up out of that situation and placed him on something supernatural. I can, I can think that he hopped out because if I was tied up or something, I would have did this. But the Bible says he came forth. So if he came up from laying down elevated, suited up like this, that same supernatural power that elevated him off that grave situation set him up. It wasn't a walkout. It wasn't a hop out. It was an elevation and then out. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Could y'all see it right there? Could y'all see it? I don't know if y'all can see it, but, but when God calls you out of a dead situation, he will rise you up and he will move you from your dead situation to your promise because the promise was not the grave. The promise was to give Lazarus everlasting life. The promise was not to be bankrupt. The promise was not to be evicted. The promise was not to be hallelujah set back but the promise for you to have life in that more abundantly. Abundantly means blessed beyond measure, beyond strength. Hallelujah. God wants you to have everything hallelujah. So I, I believe that when Lazarus came out uh, he was not touching the ground uh, hallelujah he was elevated uh, to write what God what Jesus was uh, when Jesus called his name he was moved from the grave uh, he was moved with grave clothes on uh, right to what Jesus was but listen that was the process when you read the old testament ah uh, what talks about the canker worm and the palmer worms will have to spit up what they ate up. Every incense that started chewing on his body, 
had to spit out, spit out, had to spit out this and that, had to give it back. Uh, so I'm telling somebody today, just because the enemy has taken something from you and your situation look dead right now, God said the enemy got to give that thing back. Uh, press down, shaking together and running over. God is going to give that thing back. Uh, it's your time. It's your season. Uh, I need for two or three people to slap somebody, high five and say, it's your time. Your season, hallelujah! I'm coming forth out of my dead situation. It's my time. So, from that grave to his promise. Now, when Lazarus get out there. In order for him to reap the promise of the Lord. In order for him to get the victory over death. Jesus had to tell them to loose him and let him go. So while they were unwrapping his head. Unwrapping his torso. Unwrapping his lower level his legs and his feet I can almost imagine whom the Lord set free is free indeed that there became a praise there became a shouting listen I'm through I'm asking everyone to stand in the house if you can This goes to show you that if God can't fix it, then nobody can. And just like Prophet April said, whose report you gonna believe? Hallelujah. That even in my mess, Tamaji, you said, even in your mess. God still sees your best. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to pray over you. I'm asking everybody to stand young and old. I'm asking just for a moment if you can put down your phones and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need the oh, I need thee. Listen, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I, I come to, to Thee, yes, Lord, yes. Lord, yes, Lord. What on Pentecostal saying said, Yes, Lord. What on Coja saying said, Yes, Lord. Yeah, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Every once in a while you hear those old 
build your songs. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need the Your hands in this place father right now in the name of Jesus we thank you for just being God in this place I pray God that right now that you would touch your people from the crowns of their head to the soles of their feet I'm asking God that whatever they need that you're meeting it right now somebody say yes Lord I pray that every bound situation that's been broken right now in the name of Jesus, I command them to be loose. The Bible says that whatever you should loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Somebody say, loose your hold, Satan. Loose it off of my life. Come on, repeat after me. Loose it off of my life. Loose it off of my children. Loose it off of my marriage. Loose your hold. So God, I lift them up to you today. That they may find favor in your sight. That the Holy Spirit will dwell into their lives. And that God, that you will call their names. Call them out of that dark place. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, take off the grave clothes. Take off the grave clothes. Those grave clothes represent dead situations. You've been dead too long. You've been living that foul life for too long. God said, take off the grave clothes. So I thank you in advance. Lay your hands on your head right now. Come on, lay it, lay it right down your mind, right there. That Father, I'm asking that you will go into the battlefields of their minds right now. And that God, what the medication is not working, that God, I'm asking that you work it out right now in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit move supernaturally in their life right now, God. Let this mind which is in Christ Jesus also be bestowed in them. Let your power fall in their lives, God. Comfort. Heal, deliver. Set free. declare spiritual mental vacations right now decapitate the enemy out of their minds right now God remove the stronghold and generational generational curses I thank you God that, that even now my mind is being free the battlefield that's in my mind is being free right now. I want you to let go of your head and just lift your hand up and say, Lord, I'm free. I'm free. In Jesus.
Jesus' name. Oh, song when you just sing is that I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me down. It's just a blessing. My soul is resting. Hallelujah, I'm free. Woo. I want you to say, with me, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer power. No more chains holding me down. It's just a blessing. My soul is resting. the Lord hallelujah I'm free now give the Lord a hand praise <laughs> Woo! I'm free today no more chains holding me down I can say to myself that praise the Lord hallelujah I'm free And Denise and Deborah, it's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing that I'm free. Woo! I, I hear the Lord saying, Hallelujah. I, I hear I hear the Lord saying in my spirit that your dad. It's saying his soul is just resting. Woo! And y'all need to give God praise. Come on, let's praise God with them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to give y'all some orders for this week. God said, it's time for you to start standing up. If you've been in that situation for a long time, God says, it's time to start speaking to that thing and cause that thing. If it's bad, call it to move. If it's been dead and dormant, cause it to rise up. The Bible says, speak those things that are not as though they were. You have the power to speak it. And God has said, if you speak it, God said, I will reveal it. Somebody give God praise. Now, Lord, as we get ready to depart from this place, but never from your presence, May you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say, Amen. If any of y'all kids want some candy, we got some candy for you.